one thing my heart truly wants to say to this book and that's I hate you, I love you, I hate that I love you Don't want to but I can't put nobody else above you living under a rock to not even have heard about this 8th Harry Potter canon book Harry Potter and the Cursed Child This cover is seriously in Prisma and it is so soft so now, just the release of this book has turned the whole fandom world upside down. Like, it has revived the Potterhead fandom. It really did bring out my inner Potterhead, which had been, like, in hibernation since the time I read Lord of the Rings. And now there are also new Harry Potter memes on Tumblr. It did bring a lot of Potterheads together. I mean, if you are a part of this fandom world, you know how crazy it has been. This book is pretty short, so obviously I finished it pretty fast. And since then, I've been desperately wanting to talk to somebody about this book. But there's nobody, so I'm just gonna talk to my camera. So I really like this book and I really don't like this book for its own reasons. The starting of the book is just great. It starts with the epilogue of Deathly Hallows, the Hogwarts Express, nine and three quarters platform scene. And the story just picks up where it left, like the ending of the seventh book. But that is it for the non-spoiler part. I mean, if you're a Potterhead and you have not read this book, I suggest that you go read this book because people are having really varied opinions about this book. Farewell. And for those of you who have read the book and are now coming here, hi. Make yourselves comfortable. I believe you're on the same page. I think that everybody who has read The Cursed Child is now currently trapped in the same room. There are two types of people in this world. People who ship Scorbus and people who have not read The Cursed Child. Not if you have read this book, let's 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 all scream together for Voldemort's daughter. I really did not think Albus would go into Slytherin, but he did. That is awesome. I mean, Scorpius is so good. I love Scorpius Malfoy. I mean, he just breaks the Slytherin stereotype of like being dark and edgy. A total nerd. He likes Rose. Talking about that, I really love how Rose is like a perfect combination of Hermione and Ron. And I think it is good that Albus got sorted into Slytherin. It's not a big deal. I mean, I uh, on Pottermore, I was sorted into Gryffindor, but I didn't like it. So I uh, chose Slytherin. I mean, I think Slytherin is cool. And I don't think all Slytherins are like rude. So the sudden conflicts in the story are about how Scorpius is deemed to be Voldemort's son. And at a point, okay, at a point in this story, I now regret thinking that Albus was Voldemort's son. I mean, how a part of Harry just... The, the, the Voldemort part of Harry just spiritually transferred into his son Albus. Now, the book has the really awesome scenes. This book is about time traveling. There, Albus Severus Potter, son of Harry Potter, and Scorpius Malfoy, son of Draco Malfoy. Albus just wants to prove to his father that he, he can also do stuff. So he wants to bring Cedric back. So they go into the past with this time turner, which is really cheap quality time turner. It can just uh, take you to the past like for five minutes. So they go to the past and just do small things that, that alter the whole future. Like when they come back, they're in like an alternate universe. And, in, and the first time when they time travel and they come back, Ron is not even married to Hermione. He's married to Padma and their son is named Panju. Panju Weasley. And then next time, go back to the Triwizard Tournament time and then uh, they humiliate Cedric. And when they come back, they're in an alternate universe where Albus Severus Potter doesn't even exist because Harry Potter dies and Voldemort rules the world. Uh, Severus returns on the day and Dolores Umbridge, that bitch, is the headmistress of Hogwarts and they have put all the mudbloods in jail and stuff. Cedric gets converted into the theory. Like, who? Like, are you kidding us? Like, seriously, Cedric was a Hufflepuff. I don't think Cedric would ever get converted into a Death Eater. And now they are celebrating Voldemort's Day, which is kind of a cool concept. So when Scorpius returns, Scorpius is like actually really popular in this alternate universe. But he still obviously wants Albus back. And in that alternate universe, Snape is alive. Hermione and Ron are like wanted criminals. Snape just quotes something and Hermione and Ron are like looking at him. So and so he's like, wait, did I just quote Dumbledore? That part, Snape is like, and what am, what am I doing? So he's like, ah, you're dead. So Snape is like, oh, at least I'm not married to Ron. <laughs> also really like uh, that part um, because Harry has told Albus not to be friends with Scorpius. He, you cannot separate two best friends. So Albus is like friends and Scorpius is like always. In the end, there is a Harry transfiguring into Voldemort, which is really fun to read. And we have all been kind of growing up with Harry Potter. Like we have been following him, his adventure since he was like nine. And now it's really weird to again read about that same boy, same little boy with the scar. 
who had once cracked the who had once cracked the glass of a snake cage reading about him and now he's a dad one of the things that it that got me really angry about this book was that harry is pretty harry has three children okay and harry is pretty biased about his children there's a part when it's his dialogue and he says to ginny i like him specifically like he's talking about albus i, I don't know what i don't think harry is pretty biased about the children but this book was like there is no mention of james and lily as in james and lily as in Harry's children, James and Lily. James could have this adventure. Like, yes, Albus is a bit different. He's slotted into Slytherin. He has like daddy issues and stuff. Harry Potter's children, like the main character's children. So this should not be done. No, this should not be done. Like, I now want another book which is about James and Lily. But J.K. Rowling at the release party of this book said that there won't be any more Harry Potter books. I think it is pretty wrong to be biased. But there is not even mentions of Harry talking to James and Lily. It's as if they are like. not actual children second thing which made me really angry on this book was the character of ron weasley okay i love ron weasley ron weasley is somebody who's just like me like always joking goofing around loves to eat food and yeah he is a funny character but he is also pretty smart and helpful and really brave i mean why would why would he even be in gryffindor if not so i don't know how jk rowling let that happen but in this book ron's character is like just there for comic relief i mean how i mean he's always just goofing around he's not really doing anything and he's just always cracking just i mean you could have i thought he would have like a really important role in the end like neville longbottom did in the battle of hogwarts he killed nagini but there is nothing like that he is just there for comic relief i mean okay harmony is the minister of Ma- minister of magic he runs a joke shop um other thing i think this book could have been better if there were some mentions about like fred and george teddy lupin and um, there is this part when harry is in his office and dumbledore is there like dumbledore through a painting obviously actually when there was this dialogue for dumbledore i was like oh, dumbledore is alive and then it was the painting talking so dumbledore and harry have this conversation where they discuss what has not been discussed in the seven books and which is pretty nice they discuss the relationship of harry and dumbledore but i think sirius black was more of a father character to harry than dumbledore he himself says he had no intentions of like getting attached to harry they have like the actual like real talk like all through seven books harry was very small like all that's why dumbledore couldn't always really talk to him about all the things in like a truthful manner but now that harry is old and uh, and they have like the real actual talk and then after after some time is like draco comes into his office and that talk right that talk with when harry for the first time like talk as friends which is really good and draco has a ponytail and i really like it like draco for the first time like lets out his feelings to harry and stuff like he's like very lonely being draco malfoy and i'm like That just makes him sexier. Now let's talk about the villain of this book. The villain, like the antagonist, not really the villain. I mean, uh, is a girl. Her name is Delphine. I don't know her surname. Like she has no surname. She, as per the book and stuff, is the daughter of Voldemort and Bellatrix. The thing is, she's such a turning character in the whole series. Like, really, it deframes the whole thought of Voldemort. Like. is voldemort human enough to conceive a child plus doesn't voldemort is like very busy with his Im- his immortality and uh, as uh, as i read an article delphine is like 20 years old as per the play so she must have been born somewhere in the half blood prince and does voldemort even find any woman worthy enough to bear his child there is no back story to it like yeah since it's a play obviously it has to be very concise so there's no back story to any of the characters this needs a back story and delphine just goes to all height she just wants to prepare herself for her father like she wants her father to be proud of her and she feels that her sole purpose of existence is to fulfill this one prophecy and who, who like who prophesized this prophecy and then they go back like everybody I really like the fact that draco joins the squad so they go back to 31st october 1983 and then delphine is just going to stop voldemort from killing harry potter because that's when the avada kedavra backfired and so i was thinking see delphine went to voldemort when he wanted to kill harry that was like long ago that was probably very long ago when voldemort wouldn't even know that he would be having a daughter i was just wondering how would voldemort feel if he actually met his daughter actually it was harry transfigured as voldemort who met delphine 
wouldn't it be like super weird? Or be like, what? I have a daughter. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay, so now let's get to the ending of this book. So most of the Harry Potter books have titles that talk about a thing about which Harry has no idea what it is in the starting, but in the ending, it is pretty clear what it is. But in the cursed child, by the ending, we don't even know who's the cursed child. Like, and the thing is, the ending of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows were like perfect. If you leave that book, the last sentence was and all was well, and all was not well as we see in this book. But the ending was but pretty nice, like. Awesome ending. If it ended that way, I would have been really happy. But this ending? No, I don't like this ending. I cannot accept this ending. I want more after this book. Like this book leaves a lot of confusion. So you cannot just end this epic series like this. Then this book has some plot holes. And this book is very much like a fan fiction. But I bet it was awesome when they did it in like play form. I think this play should go like on a world tour. I think so that Albus and Scorpius's reason to go into the past was not strong enough like just to save Cedric I believe like two months later when I will go to Wattpad I'm gonna see many fan fiction about this now and well if you read like a good one leave the link in the comment I'll go check it out when I realized that Voldemort has a child I was like no 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 And when I realized that that um, trolley lady actually kind of like a robot who's like this like and her pumpkin pasties are like bombs like what like 